Hey, boys and girls, uh, Straho here, a uh, long time no see. I have been uh, quite busy lately, uh, but I am finally ready to make it up to you with my Duo Pentium processor, part selection and system build video. In short, I wanted a custom case. Uh, that meant uh, custom power button, custom cooling and custom temperature control. Uh, there is custom Kung Fu all the way. I'm gonna start with the case. Uh, I had to dismantle it by drilling the rivets, cleaned it in my dishwasher. I wash more automotive and computer parts in my dishwasher than actual dishes. I then used sandpaper to remove any rust and in order for the primer to stick better. Before the primer dried uh, well, I laid uh, two layers of this uh, custom Viper green paint. It costed me like uh, 15 US dollars for both uh, the primer and the paint. By the way, guys, I have no idea what uh, did they put in the paint, but uh, breathing it, oh boy, it was a funny experience. After I finished my glorious uh, Michelangelo moment, I've put back uh, the case all together with stainless steel uh, hexagonal bolts, cause they are really cool. Uh, what else uh, can you see? My original plan was to build uh, this machine in a fighter style exoskeleton exposed case. Uh, that meant that I needed a custom power button. Uh, the button is water resistant actually, for no particular reason in my case other than being extremely cool. Guys, uh, since uh, this is a workstation, I wanted to use only professional peripetal cards. Uh, you can see here some graphics adapters. I'm gonna explain everything later. SCSI controller, uh, video input controller, a couple of sound cards, MPEG-2 decoder, more graphics cards, and some Ethernet controllers. Another big sound card here, the Creative AWE32. Uh, and uh, that's about it. I'm gonna talk now a little about the case. On the case uh, topic, you can see custom Blue Pearl paint job for the power supply, CD-ROM and floppy. Uh, this is a voltmeter. I'm gonna use it to measure my main system voltages. For now, just the 12 volt rail. Uh, but later I will create a simple logic to monitor all main system voltages. Uh, duct tape, I have uh, used it uh, to make my cables round and they are much neater that way. Uh, custom uh, cooling, uh, this uh, Lampa Lamp LED, I'm gonna use it to illuminate my internals. Some stickers, uh, pull to eject, no step. And this is my favorite, a uh, Pikachu high voltage. Uh, this warns us uh, that uh, there are high voltages inside, so no touchy-touchy when the system works. Also custom uh, silent uh, cooling inside, and I have changed uh, most of the capacitors inside, because uh, this machine needs to be stable. Now, I originally intended to use uh, this uh, analog genuine uh, Russian LADA voltmeter, uh, that probably stayed in some warehouse for 26 years uh, since uh, it went successfully through a quality check until I found it uh, several months ago. But then I decided to use that on my bike cause uh, just uh, look at it. To cool the beast, I initially intended to put water cooling but this is a total overkill for this uh, system. So for now I'm gonna use standard air cooling. And when I say standard, uh, look at this uh, blue cylindrical heatsink. I have found a couple of them more than 10 years ago from, and I'm not kidding you, the most 80s uh, stereotypical hacker you could possibly imagine. Over 40 years old, living with his mother, beard, belly. I kid you not guys, 80s hacker by the book. For me, seeing him was a lifetime experience. I will now show you how this works. Uh, this heatsink is made of two parts. Uh, the base, which is a US patent something, international patent pending. Uh, your processor just uh, slides in here, like that. There are two notches here, two notches here, uh, that uh, keep your processor 
in place. You just put some uh, thermal paste here for better cooling and then there is a thread on the heatsink. It, the, it uh, just uh, slides in here and you rotate uh, clockwise until your processor is uh, firmly pushed to those notches. And then you can install it or you can uh, put your processor in base and then just uh, screw in the heatsink on the motherboard. Come on, focus! Focus, focus, focus! Yay! Over with the case and cooling, uh, let's proceed with the motherboard. It's a Tyan 1563D, a dual SMP support with up to two 200 MHz Pentiums with uh, multimedia extensions. Oh, where did I put my bullet? Uh, damn! Bullet, where are you? I need to show my viewers something. Jesus! Uh, there will be no mercy for you when I find you. There you are, you naughty little bullet. Uh, that is my pointer. Uh, back to the motherboard, Intel 430HX, a north bridge here, south bridge here, system bias, uh, real-time clock and uh, CMOS uh, in this uh, package. Uh, this is an APIC uh, controller, it's uh, used to manage IRQs better. A level 2 cache, a level 1 is in the CPUs, two voltage uh, regulators, uh, remember the right one, there is a slight problem with it, I'm gonna explain it to you later. A keyboard controller, a floppy disk controller and uh, legacy devices, two COM ports, parallel port, floppy uh, connector and two ED connectors, eight populated slots of system memory, I'm gonna use 128 megabytes of EDO memory, uh, up to half a gig supported with error correction and parity, uh, for the mid 90s it's a huge amount of memory. Uh, what else? Uh, Tayan uh, still supports uh, this board. Uh, you can find uh, the board's uh, manual on uh, their website and it's uh, some 20 years after this uh, board was uh, manufactured. For, for that Tayan, just a round of applause. I'm gonna use uh, two Pentiums with multimedia extensions uh, working at uh, 200 MHz. Uh, the 200 MHz uh, P55C MM Hex uh, model was priced around 450 US dollars in 97. So for two of them, 900 USD just for the CPUs, uh, three times a clock multiplier and 66 MHz front side bus, it makes approximately 200 MHz. Uh, there is a slight problem with the board as I told you. I'm gonna show you more about it at the end of the video when I fire the beast. Since uh, this is a workstation, I wanted to use only professional graphics cards here. Uh, Permedia 1 on the right, uh, 4 max of uh, memory, upgradable to 8 via this proprietary connector, a graphical processor, no need of a heat sink uh, because this is not that powerful, uh, video bias here and this uh, voltage regulator here is pretty similar to the one found on my motherboard, uh, digital to analog converter here, uh, so you can output your analog signal via this RGB connector to your analog monitor. I honestly think uh, that the Matrox Millennium 2 is the better card, that's the one on the left, and I'm gonna leave this aside and focus on the Matrox, uh, but on some later stage I will also test uh, the Permedia 1 on this machine to see if I am wrong or right on which is the faster card. Speaking of the Matrox uh, Millennium 2, uh, it can come in uh, different versions and depending on what version you have, uh, you can configure it with uh, 2, 4, 6, uh, 8, 12 or even 16 MB of WRAM uh, working at uh, 66 MHz. Uh, the core is uh, working at uh, 62 MHz, again, no need of a heatsink because this is not that powerful either. A voltage regulator, a RAM deck, again, digital to analog conversion, couple of more connectors so you can hook up a uh, cool Matrox stuff and you can see that uh, connector here next to our standard RGB connector. It looks like an Apple display connector but I'm not sure it is. I'm gonna check or if you know I'll leave a comment. Anyway 
this is the card I'm going to use and we'll see how it uh, behaves in uh, professional applications and in some casual gaming. Speaking of uh, casual gaming, uh, this thing supports 3D on paper and DirectX 5 but it's missing uh, key features uh, such as alpha blending and bilinear filtering uh, so that means uh, no other way to say it, very ugly games I will show you in tests I could have used uh, the Voodoo Rush I kind of like the Rush uh, although it was mostly terrible but for me there is no point uh, on an old 2 CPU machine uh, I will focus not on gaming on it uh, Price uh, when this thing was new around uh, 400 US dollars for the 8 megabyte version and again Matrox just like in Tyan's case still provide drivers and manuals on their site so 10 points for Matrox as well I would also like to add a quad output money not quad, quad is in quad computing quad output monitor card uh, because can you imagine uh, something cooler than a row of CRTs uh, showing different stuff around? I uh, initially intended to use this Epic Quad uh, Matrox uh, G200 uh, for G200 cores under those heatsinks uh, and they work uh, together via this uh, PCI bridge uh, made by Intel uh, and this is memory for each of uh, those cores, 8 megs in total uh, there is some memory at the back as well uh, but in the end uh, this card is newer than my PC's era and instead of it I decided to use this uh, Cirrus Logic Quad Output Graphics Adapter again 4 cores and they uh, communicate with the PCI bus via this uh, PCI bridge again voltage regulator, uh, video bias, ultra proprietary connector and some memory at the back could have been could have been more memory but uh, not all spaces are populated I think uh, 2 megabytes per graphical processor here it's gonna be okay I'm gonna hook up many CRTs time to get on with the disk subsystem uh, this PCI dual channel multifunction single vented ultra SCSI solution it's made by Symbios and it's the Symbios 22801 controller I like it because it has uh, three types of uh, SCSI connectors and I can basically hook up uh, many kinds of uh, funny devices. A compact SCSI hard drive, uh, you can't see it but it's up here, just a second. Uh, now, unscrew here. Oh yeah, I'm the next Spielberg, absolutely. Okay, uh, back to the hard drive, uh, compact SCSI 4.3 gigs. Uh, working at blazing uh, 7200 rpm SCSI of course uh, nothing faster back at the day uh, then plus I really like the way this thing uh, spins on during post huge amount of storage and speed and it probably costed a fortune back then floppy and DVD too much uh, the fighter style look of the case uh, so they are stripped from their protective front panels and painted in uh, blue pearl paint as well uh, dust will go inside and will cause trouble so frequent uh, cleaning will be necessary uh, this is a small price to pay for all that uh, glorious look and I could uh, create a cleaning system with uh, compressed air on some later stage aha uh -huh, networking uh, yes guys uh, this being a workstation it could have been used in a nuclear power plant for example in some uh, SCADA system to monitor and control uh, critical parts of the power plant and for that you need networking I have chosen uh, these uh, three adapters they are all 100 megabits uh, full duplex uh, solutions I could have used an ESA adapter but it would have been uh, 10 megabits or a token ring but I don't really like token ring networking uh, so uh, this here classical Intel, uh, this here classical AMD, uh, this also has an inbuilt ruler so you can measure your bullet, yep almost uh, 3 inches long uh, and um, the card, the adapter I am going to use this one because it has a fiber channel medium and I like that, a boot room missing uh, but the boot room is also missing here, it's only available on uh, the AMD board but I'm not gonna 
boot anything through PXE. So this is my weapon of choice. Come on, focus. And by now I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, can he count? He has only four PCI swords and they are all occupied. And you would be completely right. That said, uh, there is a scenario in which uh, you could uh, have more than one of those workstations and they could be configured in, uh, to uh, fulfill different roles. Uh, in one of those roles uh, you could use this uh, uh, Matrox Meteor 2 video input controller uh, for several reasons. Uh, one, I just like it. Uh, two, it is called Meteor and you cannot uh, get cooler than that. Three, you could, uh, I don't know, possibly monitor um, some security cameras and then uh, display their footage on uh, those four uh, CRTs you have hooked up uh, via your quad output uh, graphics adapter. And the last re the reason, last but not least, of course, uh, you could hook up uh, this CD-ROM. And I'll give you a hint, this is not a CD-ROM. Uh, this is an 8-bit uh, camouflaged gaming console. Uh, so you could play some 8-bit goodness on your workstation uh, hidden from your buses because, as I told you, this does not look like a gaming console. What else? 2 megs of uh, memory upgradable to 4 via this uh, proprietary connector. Uh, we have had 3 different proprietary connectors tonight, none of which uh, is like the other. Uh, voltage regulator, uh, this here is an OSI processor co-developed with uh, Matrox in 96. Uh, this here standard 4P power connector delivering 12 and 5 volts to the board and via this uh, jumper here it's rerouted to your cameras via this again proprietary connector and this port here is to attach your gaming console. I meant uh, security cameras. With all those uh, PCI swats occupied and even cards waiting in line it would be unwise uh, not to utilize these uh, swats on the motherboard and in one of them I'm gonna install a sound card because I want to play some mp3s. It was the dawn of the mp3s, so one hour to download a song via a modem and that in case you were lucky, also internet was very expensive. Uh, where I lived uh, it costed like uh, one dollar per hour. Uh, then that said, uh, I wanted to use this Aztec sound card uh, because it's triangular. But in the end, uh, I have decided to use this uh, Creative AWE64. Except for the AWE64 Gold, uh, this is the best sound card available for the masses in 97. I wanted to use the Gold, uh, but as the name implies, nowadays it costs its weight in Gold. What else? Uh, it is much smaller than the AWA32. Also, the memory layout is different. Uh, the 32 uses 30 pin SIMs. Uh, this one uses a proprietary, again, a creative uh, connector because creative wanted to control the memory upgrades. Uh, that said, they are adapters that allow you to use 30-pin uh, memory modules on your AWE 64s. Better polyphony, although software enhanced and not via the creative's uh, audio processor. Better signal to noise ratio and better overall sound quality. Improved integration, uh, less chips uh, do more stuff. And it, in overall, it's not that different from the AWA32. Uh, look at uh, the AWA64 as a best of version. Uh, the Gold is even better, more memory, a better digital to analog conversion, a golden LCA connectors here, and Sony Philips uh, digital interface. Uh, let's hope I will lay my hands uh, on the Gold someday. I am uh, getting one step uh, closer to building uh, this machine. Uh, remember how I told you about a problem with the board in the beginning? Uh, one of our two voltage regulators, uh, the right one, uh, has died at some point uh, in the past and it was replaced with a similar but uh, not the right one. Uh, so voltage regulation uh, no longer works uh, the way Tayan intended. Uh, it took me some tries and a multimeter to figure out the right uh, jumper configuration. And even then, when I have uh, finally supplied our processors with the right voltage, uh, the change uh, voltage regulator dissipates uh, way too much heat, as I am about to show you when I power on the machine. As a matter of fact, it works just fine like that. 
but I want to do all things uh, the right way, so I have ordered uh, two new voltage regulators from England. Uh, they are exactly the genuine type uh, Tyan used uh, 20 years ago and I will change them in some repair video when I have more things to solder. Uh, that said, uh, I am going now to finish my build and show you the machine in detail. I will also power it on and after that I will end this video. A uh, software video will be coming of course, NT4 and Osto Warp, a dual boot, ancient databases, uh, some games, it will be epic. Finally ready to start the beast uh, and see if it works. I will also show you the problem with the voltage regulator. Before that, on the right uh, you can see the two new voltage regulators, which I will solder at some later point. And next to it is my uh, custom uh, development uh, cooling board. Uh, it's a simple logic, it will measure the ambient temperature in the case and it is also configurable by hand. Uh, it will take care of the cooling. With that said, let's do this. There we go, fingers crossed. You can see 12.7 volts on the digital voltmeter and the monitor has lit. That's always a great sign. I will now deploy my digital infrared thermometer and see the measurements. Forty-nine, fifty-seven, sixty-one, sixty-one point three, sixty-one point five. It's rising. The normal temperature for this uh, voltage regulator is like thirty degrees, so this uh, needs uh, changing. I will do that at some later point. I will now showcase the build. And after that, I will end this video. After two months of hard work, guys, just look at it. Uh, isn't it uh, glorious? Now, uh, best known fact is that if you want to showcase your build uh, the best, uh, you need to use this IKEA furniture. And with its help, uh, just look at it. From every angle, it's perfect. I'm really happy with uh, the end result, guys. Uh, initially, I wanted uh, to give uh, the case to a professional paint studio uh, to get the best uh, paint possible. But after I left it there, it uh, took them 45 days to do absolutely nothing. And I lost my patience uh, when they got my case back, uh, bought some paint and primary di and uh, did it myself. But unfortunately, that cost me a lot of time. Anyway. I'm very happy with the end result. Uh, I hope you're happy and you liked uh, this video as well. If you did, uh, please uh, leave a comment, a like, or you can even subscribe or grab a beer or juice, if you don't like beer, of course, or you can basically do whatever you like. As usually, all data sheets uh, for this build uh, will be linked uh, under the video and they are hosted in my awesome Garage Data Center. So forgive me if it's not uh, always um, online. I will tell you more about it uh, some other time. Until then, bye. See you next time. Mr. Caveman over and out.